What is up, amigos? Today we're looking at the aerodynamics of a square back and how to control it. And if you haven't looked at some of our other videos on the aerodynamics of the rear of a car, check some of them out. For example, this one in the card here. So first we're gonna be going through the general aerodynamics, then reducing the drag and flow control devices. So a square back is exactly what, you, what it sounds like. So the back of the car is very sharp. So you have like a rectangle or a square making up the back. And what we have here is we have the flow coming over the car. And then we have two general vortex systems. The first one is the one that comes around from the sides of the car. And this rolls up into a general vortex going in this sort of direction around the car. And it spins as the arrows show here. The other vortex system that we have is coming over the top and the bottom. And this forms a vortex system like this, a core going like that. And it spins around in this direction. Now, vortices in general in the rear are usually quite bad for aerodynamics, and this is no exception. So this here, we have a lot of low pressure on this rear face, which means that the pressure drag and the profile drag in total, in general, goes up. Obviously, that's not good for a car. So how do we reduce the drag here? There are a few different flow control, flow control devices we use, and one of them we'll go through first is the rear spoiler. So let's say we have the back here, so we're looking from like, this point of view straight up and the flow is coming over and instead of letting it just separate we then have a little fin at the back what this does is it makes sure that the flow will definitely separate at this point instead of if you have like a rounded surface for example the flow might uh, come across and it might separate here might come down separate a little bit further and it might sh shift back and forth in time and this results in a shear layer forming and we get these vortices this vortex system by having this little roof spoiler, we can control where the, vortex, where the uh, flow separates and mitigate this vortex system. So now we just have a general wake coming down here. What's more, by angling this roof here, we can control how big this wake is. So for example, if we had a, another back here and we had the roof more at an angle like this, so not nearly as steep, so the flow will come and it'll be directed this way. So then now the wake here you can see is significantly uh, wider than here. A bigger wake generally means a bigger pressure drag. So this rear roof spoiler is very effective in reducing the drag. Now, one thing that we should talk about this is the effect it has on lift. So the more you angle the flow down, the generally speaking, the greater the lift will be. So that's a trade-off. So it, for a car, we often don't want to have positive lift because if we have positive lift, it means at high uh, speeds, we lose stability of the car. So it, it, we lose traction, obviously, so you can't really um, control the car as well. So we don't want to deflect the flow too much down, otherwise we lose stability of the car. But if we have it deflecting not nearly that much, then we also have a very high drag. So there's this balancing act between the two. That's one flow control device. We have another flow control device. Let's say we're looking on top now. I don't have any room here, so let's do maybe a third uh, person projection here instead. So we're looking on top now and the flow is coming along the sides. And very similarly, we now just have these rear fins coming off the back. And in reality, we can't really have these really big fins coming off the back. They have to be very small and sharp. The keyword there being sharp, because if we have them to be sharp, it, we then can control where the flow separates and we can mitigate again this vortex system. Now, what happens is, as I mentioned, instead of having the flow coming around and rolling to this vortex system, it just comes around and separates, and now we just have a regular wake forming here. And that reduces the drag. And the more that we point these fins in, the smaller the wake is, and the lower the drag will be. That's the second flow control device. The third flow control device is the diffuser. So now let's say we're looking from underneath the car, Actually, we'll go this, yeah, from the side of the car, sorry. So instead of, we have the, we might have the roof rear spoiler, for example, but now we have the diffuser, which is now up at an angle. So the flow coming from underneath the car will then follow this diffuser and go upwards. This has two effects on the car. One is it would reduce the drag because now we have a smaller wake, but two, by deflecting the flow upwards, the lift coefficient can reduce. By doing that, we can increase the stability of the car and often uh, increase how fast you can go around corners. If you go into motorsport, for example, this is a major factor. And also in regular cars, the diffuser is very important. One major problem with the diffuser is because we have the underbody and often there's a lot of junk under there, which is exposed, that turbulates the flow and it just doesn't have it going in a very nice streamlined fashion. That means that we often can get flow separation on this diffuser and make matters worse. So 
designing this diffuser properly is an art in itself and keeping the flow attached is ideal. So that is the square back rear aerodynamics, the general aerodynamics of it, as well as how to reduce the drag. So let's just go through it quickly again. We have two general vortex systems occurring over the back of a square back. One, we have the flow coming around from the sides and that rolls up into this vortex sort of ring. We then have the flow coming over the top and bottom and again, it, it rolls up into like this vortex kind of ring as well. Both of these things result in a much greater pressure drag and drag overall. To control that, we can have a few different flow control devices. One is the roof, uh, the roof swirl, sorry, where we have on top this little fin coming down. We can change the angle of it as well as the length of it. And generally speaking, there is a sweet zone where if we go more than that, like it's just too long or too steeply pitched, we might get flow separation or in, an increase in drag. So we want to have an optimal design where we have still a reduction in drag, but also not a such a great increase in the lift either. Another flow control device is on the sides. We have these little fins coming out again to control where the flow separates instead of just letting it separate willy nilly and making this vortex system. We control it so it can't do willy nilly. It might just be able to do willy or nilly, but not both of them together. Uh, but so the flow separates in a controlled fashion and we get a reduced weight ideally. That reduces the drag. I should probably put that here as well. And finally, the third general flow control device is the rear diffuser, which is underneath the body. So if you look at pretty much any car on the road these days, underneath it, you'll see that the back is sort of tilted up a little bit. This is the diffuser. And by tilting it up, you can then direct the flow upwards, reduce the wake size, which mean, that means the drag drops, and also increase the downforce, so reduce the lift. That increases the stability of the car. So if you like this, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out that video that I mentioned earlier, which I put the card to, but also our other playlist videos. And if you want to get better at this, check out our courses that we do in the link description and also check out a book by Joseph Cass called Automotive Aerodynamics. You can find that in the link description. And I'll see you next video. Peace amigos.